Hey guys, it's quote unquote your boy, Ballface8020, back again with another astrological analysis. Um, I know some of you have expressed interest about more political charts. I'm not really in a position to be able to do anything on the political front until Kamala uh, accepts the, um, the nomination officially, because I need to know the exact time that her acceptance speech begins to do a chart for her campaign. And then today, tonight, we're doing a horary chart, which can be, you don't need any data, date time for that data, but um, to do it for an election is more complicated than what I'm doing here. And um, also, we don't know, like, there's no way for me to know at this time what house to give Kamala, because, like, normally it would be, since I'm pro-Trump, Trump would be the first house and his, the other, Kamala, would be the seventh house. However, if she's running as the incumbent president, then she would actually be the tenth house, the house of the king. Um, and even if she's not running as the incumbent president, she's still the incumbent vice president. So should she get the tenth house? It's unclear. So I don't want to do a horror chart for that, you know, for right, at least right now. Maybe I will later, but I don't want to do it now. This is a more simple horror chart. This is for the upcoming UFC bantamweight title fight which will not which will be at about a month from today I believe um where uh Sean o bantamweight champion Sean O'Malley is defending against some Chechen guy their names are all kind of blend together I'm not really a UFC fan I will not be watching this fight um I don't really know I know a little bit about Sean O'Malley just because I've heard of him and seen pictures of him um but I'm, I, you know, like insofar as I any combat sports, I don't like watch boxing, which I don't really follow that closely anymore. Uh, you know, UFC and MMA doesn't doesn't do it for me. But um, so anyway, I thought it would be fun to you know test my skills out and on this and to see you know I'm used to doing event charts. This is a horror chart, so I wanted to see how it would work. And uh, now. O'Malley is actually, even though he's the current champ, he's the underdog in this fight. Um, he's a plus 100 underdog, which means that if you bet $10 on O'Malley, you would win 10, you would win, you would get back 20, or a, you would net another $10. Whereas if you bet on the, um, you bet on the other guy, uh, you'll, you, you'd have to bet $10 to win, like, eight dollars so you'd get back eighteen dollars on that bet something like that I, it might even be worse than that i don't know um okay so horror chart which means that all you do is you cast chart and set it for the time and place that you were when the question came to you when the query came to you and the query is very important that's the thing is like you can't I, and i've learned this the hard way you can't just do this with events that you don't care about or don't have any relation to you like you can't just do go to say like oh hey um you know i'm here in uh Grosse point michigan and at 303 local time i thought um who is going to win the game Who's going to win tonight's baseball game between the Colorado Rockies and the Arizona Diamondbacks? Something like that. That will not work if you don't like you don't care about either team. You don't have any connection to either team. It's not going to work. Uh, you get around that in ones like this because you don't actually have to ask. Um, you can just ask, will the champ retain his title? That's the question. When it's something like that, you can when it's, it's like for a championship game, you can just ask, and uh, and it should work. I guess we're about to find out. So the query for this chart, the query before I cast the chart, was uh, will the champ retain his title in the upcoming UFC Bantamweight match? Will the champ, you know, retain his title? Um, so um, basically with these kind of charts, generally and they're called contest charts, the person who you're asking so like in this case you'd think it would be the champ in this house would have the first house and then the other would be his opponent would have the seventh house over here it doesn't work like that when it's a champion when it's a champion a reigning champion who like whole actually holds the title that if he loses he'll give it up um 
he has the tenth house, the house of kings. And the challenger has the fourth house, the house of the other. Now, this does change a little bit. Let's say that you uh, you do the chart, will the champ retain his title, and you're a big fan of the challenger. You really want the challenger to win. Like, you got, like, you, you got, for some of them, maybe he's from the same country as you. Maybe he's a friend of yours. Maybe you just really admire him and enjoy watching him fight. Maybe you just really hate the champion. Um, in that case, he's the fourth is no longer the house you do it. And in that case, the the champion is still the tenth house, but the guy you want to win gets the first house. And if it's the reverse, let's say you're a diehard fan of the champion, and you know, or or maybe you just really hate the challenger. In that case, the champion no longer gets the tenth house. In that case, the champion gets the first house. And the challenger gets the seventh house. So this, you know, this, it can be complicated. Now, I don't give a shit about either of these guys. My question was just, will the champ retain his title in the, you know, upcoming UFC September, upcoming September UFC bantamweight title match? So the champ O'Malley gets the tenth house. The challenger, the Chechen guy, gets the fourth house. The, uh, you can't really, it's hard to kind of see it here. It kind of looks like the 10th house is ruled by Aries, but that's not true. You can see it's actually ruled by Pisces. So that's Jupiter. Um, so O'Malley's signifier in this chart is Jupiter. The Chechen guy, again, it looks like it's Libra down here. It's actually Virgo. So that's um, Mercury. The... Challenger's signifier in this chart is Mercury. Okay, so let's see where we go here. So we're here in the first house, um, O'Malley's first house right here, and we have got the um, north node here. So it's not on an angle, but it is still the north. The north node's good, the south node's bad. But you only count it as one testimony because the south node's always going to be directly opposite of the north node. So it's not like... You don't say like, oh, good, O'Malley has the North Node and, ah, the Chechen guy, so that's plus one for O'Malley. But then we have, oh, the Chechen guy has the South Node, that's bad, so it's plus two for O'Malley. No, 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 it's just one testimony. O'Malley's got the North Node, so, okay, I, I don't know if I'd go plus one about it because it's not really that close to the angle. And not only is it not close to the angle, but it's actually insulated because, as you can see, the North Node is in Aries and the house starts in Pisces. So there's like a sign break insulation. So any advantage O'Malley is getting from this is very slight. It's basically not even worth noting. So um, it's basically, it doesn't matter. Chiron, you can ignore it. doesn't matter for these charts. Part of fortune, uh, right on the, right on the, um, the ascendant, O'Malley's ascendant. Eh, I don't know. It, Hmm. Yeah. Um, it probably doesn't mean anything, but I don't know. It's, it's worth keeping in mind, I guess. Um, this is actually a night chart, which means part of fortune, because, you know, you can calculate part of fortune as being here, but you could also, if you could also calculating it differently, depending on if you calculate part of fortune different for day or night charts. So basically this means nothing. I mean, maybe it does, but no, nothing that I can understand at least. You've also got Neptune, that's an invisible planet, right on the ascendant. Um, it, is in, it is in a good place, good at house for it. It's right on the ascendant and it's in Pisces. Uh, my guess is it probably doesn't mean anything. Um, it would Generally, you would interpret this as to mean something kind of like either corrupt or controversial. Um, like, you know, like maybe there's like a controversial controversial stoppage win or the decision is controversial or something i don't know something gets rigged something M my guess is it means nothing but uh, you know it's it's right there on the ascendant so you can't just totally ignore it um okay so that's here that's um that's o'malley's first house but anyway what we really care about here is o'malley's signifier which is jupiter so here we go jupiter is in the 12th house, but it's actually, so this is the first house for O'Malley, second house, third house. So Jupiter's in the third house. That's a neutral house in terms of things. So it's, um, for houses, you go in an, in an, in an 
um, in an orary chart, your first, your, your, your first, fourth, and tenth chart, tenth houses are very good. Your seventh house is very bad because that's the house of your enemy. Um, your six, eighth, and twelfth houses are bad, and everything else is neutral. So basically, this means his O'Malley signifier is in a neutral house. It's in uh, Gemini, so that's what's called Ju uh, Jupiter is in what's called in detriment in Gemini. It's Gem I mean, Gemini is a bad sign for Jupiter. So it's um, you know, it's uh. It's, it's weak in that. Essential dignity, that's called essential dignity. Not very important in horror charts, or in, not very important in contest horror charts. So, you know, so it's basically he's got okay, his play, house placement is okay. It's nothing special. Um, it does have, you know, bad essential dignity, which is worth making note of, but it's not like a huge deal. Um, the... Uh, and it is, what do we got here? It is uh, conjunct with, very tight applying conjunction with Mars. That is kind of a negative in this one. I mean, Mars is Mars is in Gemini, which is kind of like neutral for it. It's, an, it's just, basically, you would rather not have that. It's not horrible. It's not killing it. But that is a conjunction. That is probably on the bad side. You can also see it here. It's got this tight would-be conjunction with Jupiter. And because um, Jupiter is in retro, I mean, not Jupiter, I'm sorry. Um, with uh, Saturn is in retrograde. This one, again, because, because Saturn is in Pisces where it has no essential dignity, it's kind of a negative thing for, for Jupiter here. It's not hugely bad. But since um, Saturn is in Pisces, which is ruled by Jupiter, it's like not it's it goes from being a slight disadvantage to O'Malley to a non-existent thing. It just it doesn't matter. So so far we really just don't have much testimony one way or the other. Like right, it looks okay for O'Malley. Nothing nothing really uh, nothing really good or bad. Now let's go to his challenger who's down here. Now, the Challenger, as we said, he does have the south node in here, but it doesn't matter because it's insulated and it's pretty far away from the angle anyway. So there. Now, his Challenger is um, ruled by, uh, the Chechen guy, is ruled by Mercury. And look what we have here. Mercury is on the surface in pretty bad shape because it's in retrograde, so that's it, which isn't horrible, but it's, it is a disadvantage. It's not going slow per se, but it's going on the slower side. I know you can't see it here, but if you see the animations, the Mercury is going at below average speed for Mercury, which is a bad thing. The um, it's not like super slow though, so it's not nothing worth really. It's not really. It's it's like a very minor testimony against the Challenger. What what is bad though is remember how O'Malley is in the third house. And, um, you know, so that's, you know, okay, it's a neutral placement. However, this uh, Mercury here is in the 12th, uh, the Challenger's 12th house. That's bad. That's really bad. So that is, uh, and it's right on the cusp, too. So really strong, like strongly, very much controlled by this bad house. Um so that is a very strong testimony against the against the challenger. And it was enough for me to, when I saw this, think, oh, okay, O'Malley wins. Because he's got, like, a cusp 12th house. The challenger has a, his signifiers in a cusp 12th house. O'Malley's is in the third house. That's no contest. O'Malley wins. But it's not that simple. Because... Um, the essential dignity here. The planet, yes, the Mercury is on the cusp of the 12th house. That is really bad. But 
but the um it's in virgo which um is where mercury is exalted so the exaltation is the most when you comes to like planetary dignity and horary charts the most important thing you're looking for is exaltation that like over that would basically completely overrules the crappy accidental dignity the accidental dignity is means what house you're in so yes it's in a terrible house it's in retrograde it's not going very fast but guess what it's exalted and although you can't see it on this chart it's actually in a very tight conjunction with regulus uh fixed star regulus the most important star in the sky the star that in contest horaries indicates victory and triumph the only star out of 200 some in the sky that can that indicates victory and triumph and uh so that is a pretty damn strong testimony right there for uh <laughs> for the um for the challenger and uh and and i would say that that's definitive at that point like that's a the, the challenger is going to win this fight um the other signifiers you look for in in these types of fights because it's a championship fight that means that um the champ gets the sun and the challenger gets the moon the sun you can see here is in Oh, I didn't realize this, but the sun's accidental dignity is shit. It's in the eighth house. However, it's in its own sign. So it's not really that bad. It's kind of like, eh, you know, it's not what you'd like to see. But, I mean, it's worth making a note of, I guess. But it's not really a big deal. Um, as for the sun's aspects, it doesn't, it looks like it doesn't really, the sun doesn't appear to really have any aspects here. The, uh, you know, to other planets. Um yeah nothing with because you basically for aspects you're looking for something within three degrees and that's going to take us to our next thing here so the challenger's got the moon um the moon is okay it's waxing it looks like it's over half full and um it is in sagittarius so uh not really much essential dignity but i mean but uh in terms of accidental dignity it's in the second house so you know it's okay um what would be a concern for the moon is its opposition with um jupiter and mars uh however so it, and, and it is a concern or it's actually not a concern i'm sorry because you can see this opposition which is so as the if um jupiter and mercury are at 16 something gemini the moon when it gets to 16 something sagittarius will be in opposition with those with those planets however that's over five degrees away it's too much for a horror chart three degrees or less so nothing on that front the moon does have this horrible aspect to venus um and venus is in its fall so it's, it's it's got a very tight aspect with venus and this would be normally be a very strong testimony against the challenger however in this case uh it's venus in in mercury where um where it's exalted you know i mean not where it's exalted but where the challengers um the challenger's primary signifier mercury is exalted so this would normally be a very strong testimony against the challenger because it's such a tight conjunction with a just a horrible placement because venus is really bad when it's in virgo however it's not something it's not that big a deal in this case because of the uh, because it's its exaltation um it may even be something that it ends up becoming an advantage for the champion i mean for the challenger i'm sorry so again when you look at this again looking at these testimonies when i first did it i was like oh o'malley wins he's the underdog but he wins it was only when i came back to it and looked at it closer i was like nah the exaltation is more important than that the uh the exaltation i mean the exaltation of mercury is more important than 
the you know bad house placement. Um, the conjunction with fixed star Regulus is huge for a championship fight. That's like that's it's and it's under thirty it's under thirty minute conjunction. Um, so a degree is sixty minutes. So it's under it's under half a degree. Very tight conjunction. And um, the moon has better uh, accidental dignity than the sun. And it does have one really bad aspect, but that bad aspect isn't that bad, isn't as bad as it maybe sees on, seems on the surface because it's, um, it's a bad aspect, but it's also the exaltation of the challenger's primary signifier. And I'm sorry, a lot of this must sound like, you know, sound like German or French to you guys. Um, and it's not like I've done a great job explaining it either. But you get to the bottom line, which is when you look at everything together, yes, there's conflicting testimonies. There's a lot of chaos in this chart. You do got Neptune right on the ascendant, which may mean something, again, with controversy or fishiness. So, but I think you've seen enough here to say that the challenger wins. Um my guess is, when I look at all the chart and everything together, the challenger wins a, and there is some controversy about the decision. That would be the most straightforward interpretation of this chart. So we'll see you next month. That's all for now. See you in the next.